Good morning. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for those who uh, give me encouraging comments. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, that's encouraging right there. And you know who gave us that? God, the great God who made you, who lights you up by making you, creating you like Him in His image, creating you with intelligence. You know, so many abilities that you have is because you are made in the image of God, your creator. And you know what? I want to tell you, if you think, uh, I want to always tell you, you can make it through this day. There is a way because there is the way. And I want to tell you also, <laughs> it's not life you'd really ever want to end. It's just the pain of living because... And there is a way through that pain. And because there is the way. And that way is the one who created the light, who created the sun, who made that those dark clouds. And you know what? Nothing is impossible with God. Remember this verse, okay? It's from God's word, Luke chapter 1, verse 37. It says, For nothing will be impossible with God. For nothing will be impossible with God. And whatever you're going through, if it seems dark, God can bring light into it and turn it around in a millisecond. <laughs> I've seen that in my life. I've seen that in my marriage. And I tell you, God, nothing is impossible with God. So remember that. Luke chapter 1, verse 37. For nothing will be impossible with God. And you know who said that? Well, I think you can see this uh, you know, right in this scripture here. And uh, I just want to say, you know, uh, I was out uh, on my knees before the sun and the moon an hour ago, I think it was. And I was thinking, well, this is going to be, I think, a beautiful sunrise. And there was dark clouds, darkness, I tell you. And I'm amazed that I'm seeing this now because the S-U-N, the sun, which the Son of God, the S-O-N, Son of God, who is God the Son, who made the Son, spoke the Son, S-U-N, into existence, made that sunrise possible, the Son of God, by creating the S-U-N, the Son. And he spoke it into existence out of nothing he made it. For nothing is impossible with God. And I thought to myself, with the dark clouds there, I'm not going to see a beautiful sunrise. <laughs> Here we go again. Nothing is impossible with God. He turned it around. And who said, who said that? For nothing will be impossible with God. I've, I've spoke about this before. And it's in the story of the angel of God. Gabriel sent to Mary, a virgin named Mary. And this is his words. I'm going to read Luke chapter 1, verse 26. I'm going to, well, I've got to, I've got to back that up a little bit. Verse 24 of verse 1, because it's going to take, it's going to come into play in our study of chapter 1 of John. Because John the Baptist is, is, is proclaiming Jesus comes as a witness to help people believe in Jesus as the Son of God, John the Baptist. And that man, John the Baptist, was born by a woman named, named Elizabeth. Okay? John the Baptist who proclaimed that Jesus was the Son of God was born by Elizabeth and Chapter 1 of Luke, God's Word, verse 30, 24, it says, After these days, after these days, his wife, Elizabeth, that's, uh, that's uh, Zachariah's wife, Elizabeth, she was old. She was not able to bear a son anymore, and a miracle was going to be in her life. And that was the birth of John the Baptist. So we're here, verse 34 of chapter 1. After these days, his wife, Zachariah's wife, 
Gabriel had appeared to Zechariah and told him. Uh, Gabriel said to him in, in verse, uh, let's see, verse, I'll back up to verse 18 in chapter 1. And Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in years. And the angel answered him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I was sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. The good news that he was going to have a son. He didn't have a son. Uh, Elizabeth had no children, and she was old, and she wasn't going to have any without God acting in her life and having uh, them to be able to conceive a child. So Gabriel, Gabriel said this, I stand in the presence of God. And I was sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. And behold, you will be silent and unable to speak until the day that these things take place. The day that their son was going to be born. Because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time. And the people were waiting for Zechariah, and they were wondering at at his delay in the temple. He was a priest performing uh, his priestly job. <laughs> and the people wondered why he wasn't coming out from doing that, that priestly job. Out. And when he came out, he was unable to speak to them, and they realized that he had seen a vision in the temple. And he kept making signs to them and remained mute. And when, when his time of service was ended, he went to his home. After these days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, conceived by Zechariah, an old, Zachariah, an old man, <laughs> conceived. And for five months, she kept herself hidden, saying, Thus the Lord has done for me. Thus the Lord has done for me in the days when he looked on me to take away my reproach among people. Verse 26, in the sixth month now, the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, the angel Gabriel, the same angel, was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor. Oh, that sun is just popping up. <laughs> the sun that the Son of God made is popping up. It's declaring the glory of God, isn't it? Nothing is impossible with God. Remember that, Luke chapter 1, verse 37. For nothing will be impossible with God. Who said those words? I'm coming to it. Hang with me here. Verse 30 of chapter 1 of Luke. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. You know why he's called Jesus? Because the name Jesus means Jehovah saves. The name Jesus means God saves. The, 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 the name Jesus means the Lord saves, because Jesus is the Lord, the King of kings and Lord of lords. He's the creator of us in this universe, and that sun that we see rising. He's the one who brings light into us our intelligence, whatever ability we have to communicate. God made us that way so that we can have a relationship with him now and forever through him, him only, the only son of God, Jesus. All right? Verse 32. He will be great. This Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, of his father David, and he will reign. He comes, he says, the throne of his father David, because he comes from the lineage of David, as foretold in the scripture, 
scriptures hundreds of years ago, before this time, more than a thousand years before this time. Give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Jesus is coming back, and he's going to establish his kingdom forever with all those he's, he's going to bring into his kingdom, all those who have believed in him as Lord and Savior, and reign with us as their, his, his children, created by him, forgiven by him, because we have been believed in Jesus as our Lord and Savior, who saves us from our sin. Verse 33, And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. That son will be John the Baptist, who will proclaim that Jesus is the Son of God when, when he's a man. And when Jesus becomes a man after be, being born as a baby. All right? And behold, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, age was also conceived will <laughs> old age has also conceived a son and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren and here's the verse Luke chapter 1 verse 37 for nothing will be impossible with God the angel Gabriel said that to Mary for nothing will be impossible with God you believe that in your life and you come to God with everything in your life and he'll show you the way through it because Jesus himself said I am the way and the truth and the life no one comes to the Father except through me verse 38 and Mary said behold I am the servant of the Lord let it be to me according to your word and the angel departed from her all right and now let's go to John chapter 1 verse 1 where it says in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. In verse 14 of chapter 1, it says this, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory, glory as the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. And we just read in the, in the book of Luke where how Jesus became flesh, being born, conceived by the Holy Spirit in Mary. And born by Mary, by being conceived by the Holy Spirit. He became flesh through Mary, all right? Only because Mary conceived by the Holy Spirit. Only because God chose to do this, made this happen. And Jesus was there at the beginning of creation. He created the Son. He, he existed from eternity before the virgin birth that Mary gave birth to him on this earth after she conceived from the Holy Spirit. And this is a great witness in John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. God, the Son, Jesus, is called here the Word. As we said in verse 14, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. And we know that that Son is the Son of God, Jesus, as we've explained, being, being, being born by Mary. And don't ever let this 
believe this. If you've got you you're with someone that has a Bible that says this, it's false. If it says this, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. A God, not God. If they don't say that Jesus, the Word, is God, that's a lie. He's not a God. He is God. He is God the Son. He was not created. He created all things. Pray with me. Oh, Lord God, help us in everything we go through in life to know nothing's impossible with you and to come to you always. We come to you, Jesus, this day. And we say, Jesus, we believe you are the Son of God, the only Son of God. And we believe that, Jesus, you came out of eternity. Yes, you were born as a baby. You grew up as a man, but you remain God, the God-man. And you took our sins upon your holy body, your righteous holy body. And you bore our sins on the cross, and you paid the penalty for our sins on the cross by dying in our place. Thank you, Jesus, for taking the death we deserve. Thank you, Jesus, for going through the hell that we deserved for our sins. We trust that you did die in our place, Lord God. You punished our, you, you, you took the punishment we deserve for our sins. And you rose from the dead to give us life in you now and forget ever. For we do believe you did this for us on the cross and you rose from the dead. Live in us, Lord Jesus, as our Lord, because you are Lord. Thank you for forgiving all our sins and giving us life with you now and forever. In your name, Jesus, we pray. We turn from our sins and we turn to you, Jesus, to be the Lord of our life, to follow you and obey you. Thank you for saving us from hell and giving us life with you now and forever. And in your name we pray, amen. Thank you for being with me. Remember that verse, Luke chapter 1, verse 37, for nothing will be impossible with God. And add to that Philippians 4.13, God's word. You can say this, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. For when you made Jesus your Lord and Savior, he came inside you through the person of the Holy Spirit with all his power. More power than we need to live every day. Praise God. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Nehemiah 8.10 Remain. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. That's Philippians 4.4, 4, I believe. All right. Let's remember all those verses. Take your mind to all, the truth of God, and he will lift your life in hope. Thank you for being with me. God loves you. Jesus loves you. Amen. Bye-bye.